back again. I'm Good. Chauncey Williams. And I'm Tony Williams. And this is What Do I Do Now? Your guide to credit, debt, and planning for fi your financial success. All right, Chauncey, I got a question for you. What happened in the spring? Where did it go? Uh, I don't know. I, I'm thinking that I could start doing the outside workout at the beach. I, we was at the beach last Saturday. It was good weather, good everything. I'm getting ready to plan for this Saturday. And I'm like, I might have to change the plans. I would think so. Because yeah. we know the beach is, a prob is probably about a 15, 20 degree drop from in the city when you're out on that beachfront and that hawk coming across Lake <laughs> Michigan. It is uh, it's a different thing. Different situation. Yes, it's chilly, brother. It's chilly. Yes, it is. What do we have on our agenda today? Well, there's something been going on. Talking about it's election day, May 3rd. Okay. The Sinking Fund Initiative. And, I mean, I just, I, I, I've been seeing signs. Yes, I've been seeing signs. Vote, mm -hmm. May 3rd, Sinking Fund, and. My, from my knowledge, I heard it was uh, it was previously put out, but it wasn't advertised. Yeah, last year. It was done in the August election last year. And uh, you're right, it was kind of a mistiming. School was out, uh, folks were on vacation, and uh, I think what happened was the, the, the real supporters weren't informed, and the descenders gathered together and came out in numbers and defeated the last initiative and it was only like about 80 votes oh, that's nuts so that's a pretty pretty close situation so uh but you learn from uh, from your mistakes and i think uh this initiative is going to be a lot better uh one thing that we have to keep in mind on our show is that we can't implore people how to vote okay we can give them the facts and ask them to vote all right, so what do we, uh, like I'm looking at this flyer and it's saying that the things that, not voting yes or no, these are things that are, that will, the sink fund will These fund. are just facts. These okay. are just facts. All right. The top priorities are uh, district-wide roof repairs, mm -hmm. district-wide parking lot and sidewalk patching, mm -hmm. uh, district-wide plaster repairs, high school auditorium repairs, district-wide LED lighting upgrades. So. Okay. Some, there's some basic technology things to get you to the school of the 21st century. That's what it looks like to me. Right. Think about think about the age of our buildings. I mean, you work in you work in the school system. You work in Oakview, which is probably the newest building. The newest building with that one wing being made in like '93 or something like that. I think. Yeah. Yeah. '93. That's the wing I'm on. Other than that, great. You know, all of our buildings are are you know pre 1930s. Other than steel, I think steel. Came on board in the early 60s, still middle school, which is the middle school now. Yes. Other than Oakview, uh, you know, we have a, a relatively old uh, school system and really haven't had the money to upgrade. Uh, a lot of it has to do, you know, we're always talking about the state budget and we know what that has done to uh, public schools. Uh, the number of dollars that are appropriated for each student has definitely been diminished under these past administrations. And uh, unfortunately, it seems like our schools, uh, the, the urban schools are the ones that suffer the most. Like something I look at, like, it's like I live in that building at the high school. You spend a good, good amount of your time <laughs> in that building. Yeah, I do. I've been trying to get my wife to come in there too and make the girls lift weights with her. So oh, just, okay. <laughs> like we moving up in there or something. But like, <laughs> the other day I was walking through there and I was I was paying attention and I was like, Cause I had I had work off I had like a, a back injury and I was just like okay let me make sure I get my my body right so everything is okay but I'm walking on campus because I don't get a chance to see my old former students okay so me and Bernard <laughs> a lot of me we walking on campus and I'm I'm paying attention to the campus like okay I'm like okay what about the busing like how does a bus pick up the kids and it's just got a block to go around why is it like no road coming through the campus right right you know like it's not like you said. It, <clears throat> It's farm style. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. thanks for coming and get dropped off. There's no bus. You no. Just, that's what it seems like. No, there, there's there's a uh, a traffic flow, okay, if you go to newer schools that, that do busing. Because think about this. When all our schools were built, okay, there was no busing. 
Okay. So I, that's why everybody like walked that. to school. That's why it's so congested on blocks and stuff like that. Okay. Right. Because there was no real design given to traffic flow in and out of the school systems, especially when it came to buses, because that does require some capital in order to create those busing lanes. I can see it right now. Like the area I'm talking about, like you in the quad, the nice area, and you have like a winding road mm-hmm. that comes through that and then go to the back by the football field. Yep. That would be nice to have a winding road like that. I just It's just something I was just thinking about when I was walking through campus the other day. I'm like, so you got to go all this way around. What if you could drive through here if it was a gate or something that you said, all right, school out. You know, it's just, I don't know, it's just. It, but you're absolutely right. Those are some of the things that were discussed about, you know, what what we need to do in the event that the, this initiative fund, uh, sinking fund, passes. Um, but at every school, this is a problem. Um you, you know, I had one guy tell me about, you know, having to park in the uh, no parking zone, buses only. Tickets. No buses, getting tickets. Okay. We're not going to debate whether or not that's the, the right way to, to address these kinds of issues, but it's just a fact. Yeah, that, it's a stressful uh, time at the, at the end of the school day when you right. have somebody kind of come pick up their kids and it's four, five, six, seven cars in front of you. Right. And they, they doing the right thing because they waiting on their kid too, but it's, you know, it don't look, it look congested. And it is congested. Um, and probably a, a traffic hazard when you think about it. Because uh, I've done it, the same thing at picking my granddaughter up. It's been a long time since, you know, I had to uh, do a, a daily uh, commute to the, to the high school or the elementary schools. But I can definitely see that now. Um, that there is definitely a need in this community for these traffic lanes for our busing. And just pick up lanes for uh, for parents that do pick and drop, pick up and drop their kids off. Um, so, when you talk about a sinking fund versus a bond fund, okay, okay? that's what I was going to ask you my next question, right there. So, normally we always go after a bond. Bond has specific guidelines as to what you're going to do. So the language has to clearly state what you're going to do with the money for a bond. And you can't do anything else with it. Is it word like a bond, like money, like when you buy stocks and bonds? Right, like, absolutely. It that's just like that. That's what it is. It's like a municipal bond. It's a package deal then. It's packaged. It's a package deal that where you pay interest back to the bondholders uh, for the course of the life. That's how they make their money is when you the city, the school system would borrow the money or the city, depending on who it is. And when they pay it back, they pay it back with interest. For the folks that, that actually put the money up, that's what they get in return is the interest back on the bonds. And it's not a tremendous amount of interest, but for people that have that kind of disposable cash, it's still a way for their cash to earn you know, additional income for them by, by using it to uh, purchase bonds. Okay, And mm-hmm. the sinking fund is a little bit different because it's sort of like it's uh, use it as you go. So in this case, the bonds, the, the sinking fund money will be paid in January because that's when the taxes are collected. Okay? So the, ch- the city, the school will get a check, and then it's not like they can go out and spend this money any kind of way. It has to go to the state treasurer. You have, they have to sign off on it and say, yep, though that's appropriate way to spend the money. So say, for instance, it, one of the issues, and I had an opportunity to take a look at the LED lighting upgrades. Yes. It's a, that's huge. It saves a lot of energy, though. It it's saves a lot of energy. The classroom is so much brighter. I remember back in college, I had a class. It was a business class, and it talked about it was Westinghouse. And they were talking about how to increase productivity on the factory floor. And one of the things they did was they changed the lighting out on the factory floor to make it brighter. That's all they did, and production increased, okay? Mm-hmm. Just a subtle move like that says that, you know, because it's brighter, people probably see better, you feel better, and like you say, it's definitely a, um, a cost savings because it's cheaper. But, uh, yeah, I had, an, I had an opportunity to see a display that showed our current lighting versus LED, and it's night and day. Night and day. Yeah, night and day. Wow. So – that's kind of an overview of the sinking fund is that it goes, you know, they, we get this check every year for 10 years, okay, for the tax money that's collected. And some examples 
is if you owned a hundred and fifty thousand dollar home and the market value was a seventy five thousand dollars because you're when you get your your assessment yeah. whatever that is you always times it by two basically gives you what your market value is so that would be seventy five dollars a year is what that individual for would 10 pay years. for ten years to help our school system That's nothing which uh, it comes up to six twenty five a month. I don't think that's a lot of money to ask for when we're talking about upgrading our school system um, to make it just get it back to a, a level of uh, of normalcy. Okay, because we've been operating, in my opinion, um, somewhat in the dark. Yeah, they've been doing some great things in the school district with with, with the limited have. limited yeah. resources. I mean, they're turning kids out to college and. People graduate. There's a lot of kids from Muskegon graduate from college this weekend. Okay. The last couple of weeks I've been seeing on Facebook, I'm like, wow. So I definitely see that it's worth it. Am I not invest in the next generation and just keep on? And, you you know, you get an opportunity as a coach to go around to the various high schools in the OK Conference. Yes. You get to see what the, uh, the Rockfords, the Kennewa Hills, uh, what these schools look like, what their facilities look like. State of the art. Okay. Ours is it's, it's, it's no comparison, honestly. Okay, no comparison. And we kicking their butt. Okay. <laughs> Which is always good. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we want our kids to have, be able to be prideful, too, of our facilities. Right? Yeah. And uh, this is a part of it uh, because our kids do work hard, and I think they do a very good job of representing our school system. And I think it's a very small amount to ask to help our kids and our school system uh, because school of choice now is is real, okay? It's real, and you want your kids to be able to have some of the better facilities, versus saying, "Well, I think I'm going to transfer it to this school because I like their facilities. They're more modern. They have more technology." And uh, here we have an opportunity to to uh, take a step forward to uh, to increase the uh, the presence of our school system. Uh, I think it's a, a great way to go. So yeah, when you look at the dollars that's being asked for, it's, I don't think it's a it's a lot of money, a lot of money. Um, one of the things that uh, we ran across was some individuals were told that rent homes or apartments uh, are gonna go up. No, for seven for six dollars a month. Right. Well, see, your you know the taxes are built into your rent, okay, but the landowner. The property owner actually is the one that writes the check to the city of Muskegon. So they tell them, since you're a renter, you don't have the right to vote. Oh, yeah. You're lying to them already. Oh, yeah. So it's pretty oh. simple. That's that's even, it says, who can vote? They're lying to them. It's one of, the, one of the things on the flyer. All registered voters living in the city of Muskegon are eligible to vote. <laughs> Homeowners, renters included. Okay. That's crazy, man. So some of these folks just don't want to, you know. Then a lot of these guys are absentee landlords, of course. All right. They don't even live in this community. And they don't they could care less about our school system. Um and it says here, what will the ballot say? Shall the limitations on the amount of taxes which may be assessed against all property in the public schools of the city of Muskegon Muskegon County, Michigan, be increased by the Board of Education, be authorized to levy not to exceed one meal, one dollar for each one thousand dollars of taxable valuation for a period of ten years, 2016 to 2025, exclusive to create a sinking fund for the construction or repair of school buildings and all other proposed authorized by law. The estimate of the revenue the school district will collect in, if the millage is approved and levied in 2016 is approximately $500,000, roughly over $500,000. And the question is, you vote yes or you vote no. That's the ballot. It's the only item on the ballot. There's no other um, elections being held in the city of Muskegon. So for those that want to go out and vote, 
it will be a very quick process. Once you go in, you, you register, show your driver's license. They, they look up to show that you're a registered voter. They hand you your ballot. You go to the ballot box. You write either yes or you write no. You hand it in, and you're out of there. It's that mm-hmm. simple. There's no real hardship when it comes to voting. Wow. Um, and I think that's a key factor that we must keep in mind. Whether you vote yes or whether you vote no, we always want to continue to maintain the right to vote. Now you got, it. Now you got it thinking back to um, our professor in college. I remember this brother, he was good. He was from Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh was one of the first ghettos in the nation. Like real ghettos because they had the trains and steel, iron ore and mm-hmm. all that. And he always called it the urban donut. Like, you know, it's like you got this urban donut where you got certain things in the middle. On the outside, you have these forces of people that try to control what happened in this urban donut. Okay. So when you mention the rent, most people that own properties within the urban donut live on the outskirts of the urban donut Mm -hmm. or in those areas that are proponents that are against people voting for this actual agenda to happen. You're absolutely right. So if I own a property, I would tell my tenant to vote in a certain way. Vote no. Yeah. (laughs) To vote in a certain way because... I'm in this demographic, and I want to keep this demographic in a certain way. Right. And I want to give, make sure that the kids in this demographic are not getting the state of art, so then a certain population would still try to migrate mm-hmm. outside of the urban donut. Mm-hmm. Um, very listening, audience, it's deeper than just voting. It's a game inside of the game that if you don't go out at all, I'm telling you to read, see, go out to the polls, see for yourself. Ask questions. There's it's other underlying things that's, that's way deeper than this that that I would think that you need to really um, consider. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so on this day, the polls are still going to be open at the same amount of time? Same amount of time. Okay. Yep, yep, shut down at 7. And uh, they open up, I think, around 7. Yep, they open at 7. That's what I, like I usually try to get in as first person. 12 at hours. O'clock. And uh, it's like I say, it's going to be an easy, easy proposition because uh, there's only one thing on the ballot. Makes it real quick. But we want people to go and vote. Exercise your right to vote. If it was, if we were voting for dog catcher, I would still implore you to go out and vote because that is the power of the people. That's our voice. And if we say we, we're not going to vote because our vote doesn't count, then when things happen and they change then you don't have the right to complain, okay? Um, just This is sort of like practice. Get ready because we got another big election coming up. So this is like practice. Get in the routine yeah. of reading about the initiatives that are on the ballots. I'm glad this is the only one. Um, but actually, you know, talk to people. There's a website you can go to, and it's all about information. They're not telling you how to vote. They want you to pro- you want, you make your own decision, but we're going to give you facts about what's on the ballot. And like Chauncey, you know, said earlier, you know, um, parking lot sidewalk patching, um, that's huge. It's it's, it's it's stuff that we don't have the dollars to do it in the, in the current budget. So it's up to us to to get out and support either yay or nay this proposal. Yep, that's it. It means time for you to get out. It's just time for you to get out. I mean, looking at it and just seeing the things that's that's necessary. I mean, if you if you don't get out, you actually going against it. That's how I think. Yeah, I mean, when you look on the chart, it says a uh, uh, house market value of uh, fifty thousand, which we know there are those in this area. Um, it's like two dollars a month to help support an initiative such as the sinking fund. And again, it is, it is mandated and managed somewhat by the, the state of Michigan to say that in, any dollars that are spent must be approved by the treasurer's department um, and go from, go from there. Now, one of the things that came up in the last one was the fact that we were going to use the money for the Hackley Stadium AstroTurf. Okay, <coughs> that's not what this is about. We're definitely just looking at infrastructure. There's other initiatives from a private 
um, sector that is that is looking at if that's a way to go, if we'll use private dollars in order to, to put that in because there's still some folks that's that like grass, okay? And, but we know what happens as we move through the playoffs and when you got a freshman team, a JV team, and a varsity team using that field, come, come October, uh, it's in pretty bad shape. I mean, first part of the year, I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. But we played on three grass fields last year in this area, and Muskegon's was by far in the best condition. And this was the first year that we didn't get a home game. Of all the years, the last three, four years, man, we had all home games, and I feel just became a mess. So that's you know that's another fight for another day. Um, between you know, do we want the artificial turf? Or do we want to stick with grass? But right now we're looking at you know the condition of our buildings um, and what it's going to take to bring those those uh, buildings up to par. I mean, you can't say up to code because they have to be up to code. Um, so yeah, that that's one of the things that's uh, big on the agenda. I mean, just thinking about like I know we we had a show planned and everything, but I just really think this is this is an issue that's underlying oh. and way more important because what I've noticed is in the past when I when I wanted to buy a property or something like I'm looking at something right now, I want to be close to the school. Mm-hmm. Somebody and somebody would say, "Why you want that property?" I'm like, "Man, that's in the school zone, man. I, I need that crime." Uh, my property value, because the first thing that will get improved is the school. Right. In that area. I'm like, when you find a good property near a school, you need to grab it. So I've been working towards trying to get something in the area off Peck or something. So okay. I can get closer. But this is, this is things like this make you really consider, like, oh, yeah, I'll, they, they passed this. I'm, I'm next to that school because I know that they're looking to make some changes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a new housing development um, right across uh, – from the administration building, which is the Houston Monroe, uh, I've seen those Fifth Street yep. areas. I've been in that area already. We um in the summertime. I've been in some of the properties, so I already has been seeing that what's been going on. But like that's a school zone, a school yeah. area. Yeah, yeah. You got an elementary school right down the street. You know, the only thing out of the place, out of the way, somewhat would be the middle school. But then you come back and you got the high school that's only a few blocks away. So uh, I really think that area. It's a sort of a test, um, but I think if, if if people really snap these properties up, you're going to see more development in that corridor down Monroe Street in Houston um, because of the proximity to a lot of the, the downtown area, like you say, the public schools, the parks, the lakes. Access. So, Everything access. right now. Access. It's not, it's not about people living, living far away and not being connected to the city no more because it's not it's about – we're in a different age now. Mm-hmm. We're not in the industrial revolution where you can go to your job and and have your your money and leave. No, that's that's what I that's what I said. Pittsburgh, right? The urban that's, donut. That's like what people it was. was coming in, pulling resources away, and Muskegon had that same infrastructure. Mm-hmm. The people that made all the money lived outside the city. That's right. Now it's getting to the point that people say, "I'm moving back in." I want to move back to the city. I'm moving back in because now the resource has became a toolbox to have relationships. With people, the health care, the education, the selling of products, the social media, radio, mm-hmm. everything is an influence and gathering. If you get more and more people to gather, now they're able to share and network better. Mm-hmm. But, if you, but if you sparsed out, this person is spring like this person here or there, now you lack diversity. Everything is homogeneous. So by being able to do something and build in a school that's in that concentrated area, you would promote so much change and that yeah. will help that will help the financial growth within muskegon in the urban core right because those are homeowners that's paying taxes and i think we 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 went too far by allowing so many uh landowners to be you know the whole property and not take care of them okay. slum lords that's, that's what, what they are but they but that means they were not living in the area no oh heck so they're no. like my kids not going to school in this area i'm not no. living in the area I might not even live in the state. I have about 271 homes insured, okay, between Muskegon and Muskegon Heights. And I would say 50% of the uh, property owners don't even live in the state of Michigan. 
could care less. And that's why the city city passed an ordinance that said you must carry a minimum of ten thousand dollars of dwelling fire insurance. Because what these guys were doing is burning their properties up. If something happened, if if there was a fire and it was damaged, they would walk away. So now you got a building that's that's not inhabitable, okay, with basically an eyesore, it becomes run down, and then kids, you know, they vandalize it or you know, be used as a drug, drug den or, yeah. or something like that. So now the city is on the hook to go in and tear it down because the landlord walked away from it. So you, you want to sell it for taxes? You want to take it for taxes? Go right ahead. I've gotten my money out of the deal. So that's when they passed this this law, this ordinance, that said if you are a land, if you, if you own rental property in the city of Muskegon, you must take down to the safe built folks a certificate of insurance Sure, that at least you got ten thousand dollars of dwelling fire coverage, because that's about the average cost to demolish to one. demolish a house. It costs seven about seven thousand, right? To bring that big ball out and boom, <laughs> <laughs> to knock it, to bulldoze it. I'm all for 7, it. Yep, yep, so. yep. My own property in the, in the city of Muskegon, and uh, I'm 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 all for it, man. I think it's the right thing to do. Uh, hold these guys accountable. Um, and they'll go around. They'll measure your grass, the length of your grass. If you got clutter around your house, you got cars ha- in a backyard park. Right, you got to get rid of them, and it's you know, and we should, man. That's that's you know, pride of ownership. But then and the flip side of you get Tony is uh, people be like, oh, uh, I, don't, I ain't gonna live downtown. They don't let you, they don't let you be lazy. Okay, <laughs> so we'll see ya. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it, it's that's it's, how I look at it. So. Yeah, but you're right. You're absolutely right. And a lot of uh, a lot of landlords have have tried to sell their properties off, and there are folks. There's certain groups of folks that are still buying, um, but they got to play by the rules. The rules have changed. If you're a landowner, so uh, and I would hope those folks would support you know initiatives that that come into play for the uh, city of Muskegon, regardless of what it might be. But city council, I take my hat off to them. It was a good move on their part. Yeah, so before we uh, we finish up, um, I hope you guys found this informative. But uh, as you know, Trunch and I always have to have a, a, a little lighter side. So we're, we're getting down to this NBA uh, playoff, and there's right. some things that have happened that I think is really going to change uh, the outcome of these uh, playoffs. So for those of our, our listening audience that are – Basketball junkies too. We're gonna we're gonna get a little bit of uh, oh, basketball on. I got it. Uh, the Portland Trailblazers about okay. to put them Clippers about it now. Okay, you think that's yeah. gonna happen? Man, it's like they it's game. They up three two. They up three two. And Damian Lillard deserve it because remember, look, his whole starting lineup left him. Right. <laughs> they 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 got out of Port, out of what in Portland? What they call yeah. it? They got out of, uh, I don't know, they call it uh, Rip City. Rip City, yeah. Rip, rip your Achilles, rip your knee. <laughs> That's what they was calling it, injury-prone city. Well, <sighs> that coach is almost coach of the year. And Damian Lillard, you know, he did, he's Damian Lillard. He's okay. doing his thing. He, and he, he got, gave him some pieces to work yeah, with. they gave him them pieces. He got a like a second-year player, McCullough or somebody on the team. Yeah, he? McCullough, yep. In the backcourt from a, 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 a lower D1, you know, a the, mid-major. Man, it's like him. Yeah. There's no superstars on that basketball team. No, it's not. It's, it's not. not. It's but fun. when you, now the Clippers lose what? They two best players. Best players. Two franchise. Yeah. Pick and roll. You know what we're talking about. Right to pick and roll. Is either DeAndre Jordan and he's shooting what, fifteen percent from the free throw. Right. Line, so it's like he's a liability, liability. almost. You know? Yeah. You lose you lose uh C P three and yeah. you lose Griffin. It's over. It's over. You look, you it's lose over. Curry. Look, you lose Curry, they pulling guys off the bench. Like, oh. look. He, Livingston, come on. You, you can do it. He showed up. <laughs> he showed up the other night. <laughs> they found him by like 40 points. <laughs> Dwight Howard is like, just like the, the 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 kryptonite Superman. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Dwight Howard. He's just like, where do y'all get these guys from man, to pay them all know. this money? Man, that's a lot of money for to do nothing. It is. He should be a force in this game. Man, to do he nothing. should be a force. He's always laughing. Like he's getting smashed. You getting blowed out, and you laughing. You don't take it serious, yeah, man. You don't take you it. You don't. So then we got to move over to the uh, the Cavs and the Pistons. Yeah. All right. Pistons. I mean, I, Pistons you know, represented. I'm a Pistons man. fan, man. Right. Uh, so we got to get my man to make some free throws, drumming. Right. He got to be buddy. Shot thirty two percent. But I like Jackson. 
I like the yeah. boy that was guarding LeBron. Yeah. They, uh, the kid they just picked yeah. up. I like the twin. Okay. We need, what a, we need to bring the other twins on to us, with us, too. Come on. Why not? We need both of y'all. Trust me, if he's available, Van Gundy might go yeah, get him. We need both of them twins. Get yeah. both of They're young. Yeah. We're young, man. And they tough. And they, they tough, man. Jackson nice to point. He nice. Oh, man. Reggie, Reggie, that guy, he tough as nails, man. Uh -huh. Yeah, that that was a good series, man. Yeah, and then uh, you know, we they got, got we got broom, but every game was close. That, that they was made, it. They oh. made them play team ball. Yes, they did. As, look they, at they, they beat us with team basketball. They did. There wasn't no one man show. It was like pass the ball, swing it, swing it, and find a mismatch any yeah. way possible. And their bench was a little bit deeper than ours. Yeah. Because from you know first, second, third quarter, and there were some games we had to lead in the fourth quarter. We just couldn't finish. We okay. had them, we didn't have them veterans. Right. They got the right kind of veterans on their team. We got young boys. But I think we got some, you know, we got some good things coming with them Pistons, man. Van Gundy, he, he's coaching them up. Mm -hmm. Coaching them up. Then we got our Atlanta Boston series, you know. Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas. It's, it's funny hearing Isaiah Thomas it name is. for the Celtics. Right. Cuz <laughs> they that was a name if you spoke it in the Boston in a Boston brewery, you would get beat up. <laughs> yeah. But uh he playing like Isaiah Thomas though. Oh yeah. Yeah, leading score right now. Yeah, he had 42 the other day, like, yeah. I think like last week. I mean, they nice. just young, though. Yeah, they young, They're too. young, too. Right. Um, so, I don't think – I think Atlanta will advance. You think so? Yeah, I think Atlanta going to Atlanta get them. And they go, they right. go against uh, LeBron, them, don't they? Yes. Uh, LeBron, they're yeah. going to kill them. Yeah, yeah. So, Miami – Miami is in a little bit of trouble now. Charlotte up 3-2. to two. Yeah. And Indiana got uh, somebody, too, don't they? they, they uh, Indiana in trouble. Um – Toronto. Yeah, Toronto. Toronto. It was just it's 3 two. 2. Yeah, it's 3 2. Toronto going to get them. I think it's going to be a series where you have uh, Toronto and Cleveland. In the, in the uh, East, in the yeah. Eastern Final. Yeah. Okay. And I think Toronto going to pick Deontay Davis. I don't know if I should say that. I hope so. But I I think he's going to go eight. I like that. I think, I think he's going to go eight. I like that pick. He fit with them. They're young. They got chemistry, a nucleus. They still got the um, – who's the coach? The brother still? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I just defensive type of minded coach. He right. looking for something like that. I think Toronto yeah. gonna pick Deontay Davis. And we just, you know, unfortunately, we unless you just really seek that information, it's not seem to be readily available. You know, um, but I was surprised to see who the coach was. If somebody had walked up me and said, "Here, here's a million dollars if you can name me the coach of Toronto," yeah. I, I knew it was I him. Wouldn't have had it because he, he worked with Rick Carlisle in Denver. Oh, is that where yeah. he was at? Yeah, he was um kind of like a defensive coordinator. You know, basketball do have defensive coaches. Okay. They need <laughs> yeah, <there's no, laughs> You got to know how to like, stop them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I ain't yeah. got to know all them coaches for. They got coaches for, like, you know. Yeah, defense, I was impressed offense. with him. Yeah, I, I like impressed. him. But he came in. He hasn't been there that long, but he put that system in place. Yep, a lot of young Check. talent. Yep. A lot of young talent. Yeah, I'm with you. I hope Didi goes somewhere like that um, where they understand that youth and they want to, you know, develop, bring them along slowly. And uh, make make good ball players out of them. Because a couple of years ago, they got a hold um, when we let go of Mir Johnson when the pitch. Yeah, him, yeah. Tom Toronto grabbed him. Now he's yeah. a decent player. He is a decent player, man. Yeah, yeah. He's I was respectable on the, on the court. And right now, he is right. Good role player. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I see another pitch player we had let go. Stucky. I think he was down in um, Indiana. Indiana. Nice. Yeah, yeah. You know, we always question those kind of moves, but then when we look at what we got, it's like. Okay, I guess the general manager knew what he was doing. Stucky or Jackson? I'm taking Jackson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Stucky. That Reggie is a nightmare, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking, looking forward to next year already in yeah, <laughs> basketball. Well, I used to watch the Pistons with Stucky play. I said, they got 50 cent in the jersey. <laughs> <laughs> like, he hooped like 50 cent. He hooped like 50 cent. <laughs> <laughs> the rapper. <Yeah. laughs> But he was a good shooter. But it was like yeah. everything else. He was like a uh, watered down Joe Dumar. So it was uh, he was not worth disposing Chauncey Billups and sending him off to Denver. He oh my God! Could have rolled Chauncey out a little bit more for that. I, I think so, man. Yeah. I really do. Chauncey should have ended his career in Detroit. Yeah. He should have never got traded. Dumars. Yeah, Dumars did that. Well, anyway, Coach, looks like the old clock on the wall says that's all. Yeah, that's right. But we want to finish up uh, again. Go out and vote. May 3rd, find your voting your voting place, vote early. Uh, it won't take long. Uh, like I said, we can't tell you how to vote. You get the facts. You make your own decision. But we want to see voter turnout on Tuesday, May 3rd. This is Tony Williams. And Chauncey Williams with What Do I Do Now? Your guide to credit, debt, and planning for financial success with 103.7 The Beat. Point seven, The Beat. Point seven, The Beat. Point seven, the beat. Point seven, the beat.